This video is chock full of highlights from my short season playing as the Heaters. The discussion will be on my experience playing them, which players I came to prefer, how I dispatched the lineup, pitching staff, and rotation, what I now believe from experience is the best way to play this team, and I'll close with showing my players stats from the season and playoffs and sharing my overall impression of this new SMB team. I finished up a season with the Moose, the same team I first played in SMB2, and I wanted to try something different, something fresh. I decided to choose one of the expansion teams, and one that didn't rely too much on power, to see if those types of teams would be stronger than the previous game. The Heaters pitching staff intrigued me. What better team to get a feel for how much impact a strong pitcher can have over a weak one? They basically only have plus 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 and minus 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 arms, so I chose to jump into a season with them. I had progressed to 84 Ego during my Moost season and began this one at that setting. I was playing at 99 at the end of SMB2, so I dropped 15 points. How many points have you all dropped? I'm curious. Comment. The first game with Elmo Slayer on the mound, I struggled, still getting the hang of the new pitching mechanics, and I found myself down 8-4 to in the ninth inning. Then the bats came alive. The boys rallied back to put up five runs in the top of the ninth, capped off by a go-ahead hit-by-pitch for Ray's Rufo. I started to understand how a scrappy offense works, not relying on the long ball but focusing on passing the buck to the next guy up and cherishing each of their 27 outs. At first, I was running with a default lineup, except I moved Bolter to center to take advantage of his speed and so his lower defense than Rufo stayed as high as it could, but over time I began to crave an insertion of pop in the lineup, and Bubbles Garcia was raking in a pinch hitting role. I tried Bubbles as a starting right fielder, and although I sometimes missed Volt's speed and arm out there, the upgrade on offense undeniably outweighed the downsides on D. But I had other struggling players in my lineup as well. For whatever reason, Dion Base just could not get going for me at all, but I was hesitant to make a change. Busha Digman was the only viable choice with her as a shortstop and star moving to second, but I was convinced that contact was much more important in this game, having had great success with Fred Bobbitt when playing the Moose. But when Dion dropped to tense mojo, I gave Boucher a shot. She was okay, she scraped out a few singles, and I kept going back to her after that. I was perplexed by a lack of success from Dion, even more so because I saw decent success from Hank Hart, with very similar hitting stats. But, as happens with catchers, he needed rest eventually, and Kimmy Smoke stepped in to take her cuts. At first I thought I was clever by pushing up Hart's rest in accordance with the speed of the opposing team. I first sat him against the very slow nemesis, not many threats to steal against Kimmy's inferior arm. Then, later in the year, I noticed that Smoke's offensive output was fairly higher than Hart's. She began to start more often than not for me. At one point in the playoffs, I had Hart in a pinch hitting role, and he was 4 for 4 with two bombs. At the same time, Smoke was locked in and hitting 500. With a DH available, I'd be able to start them both, but otherwise, I'd have to have Levo at first. He was my most reliable hitter all year. During the season, I had a power slump. For several games, I barely hit for extra bases. Even Stifner and Levo were scraping the ground with their swings. I found out two errors I was making at the plate. I was very often charging my swing too early and thus overcharging it, but also I was making way too much contact on the top part of the ball. I find that to get it up over the outfielder and even the wall, contact just below dead center on the ball is ideal. When I started being more cognizant of that, the power numbers went way up. If a player's power is very low, it's better to hit closer to dead center on the ball because they need a lower launch angle or they will just fly out. But otherwise you want to go for that upward trajectory. By the time the playoffs began, I had finally decided on which players I want to pencil in for the crucial games. Ray's Rufo was nuts for me all year. The guy hit over 500 and hit for surprising power as well. He was my go-to as a leadoff bat, but I would swap in accordance with locked-in statuses from certain other players. Mantonio Leva was my guy in the two-hole. He was the most consistent hitter for me, supplying the highest on-base and slugging in my lineup. Having him second saw him at the plate a lot, which is where I needed him. It also provides good options in the later innings, where he can get that one last plate appearance in before being removed for a runner or defender. Theodore Stiffner was my three-hole guy. He was great for me early on, but went through a rough patch at the end of the season. I wanted his power and speed up in the first inning and taking a lot of ABs. I like to slide higher power, but maybe some lower contact guys in the three hole. If it goes well, they can do serious damage. If not, the fourth hitter is there to clean up their mess. Bubbles Garcia was my cleanup man. He went from the bench to the four hole. His offensive skill values make him look like a budget Levo, but his production looked better than that. He simply raked for me. Season and playoffs. 
Slapper Glute belonged in the 5 spot for me. His hitting stats look a bit better than Rufo's, but his production was a bit worse for me. Maybe him being a bit slower contributed. Maybe something about his and Rufo's stances affected me. Hard to say, but thought I had enough sample size to prioritize Rufo's plate appearances over Slapper's. He was still very good. Carlton Starr I had going up 6th. He was so streaky for me, both during the season and playoffs. He started out with a long slump and then emerged from it and caught back up all at once. He's pretty much a slight budget form of Rufo on offense, but his power versus righties will catch him up a lot of the time. Kimmy Smoke was my 7-hole bat. Her lower contact than Hart did not hinder her from outperforming him in every offensive category and winning the role. Boucher Digman came up 8th for me. I didn't give her a lot of chances during the season, but when I finally committed to her in the playoffs, she gave me much better production than most of my lineup. I do think the lower contact is more of an issue versus high velocity, but either way, I have to say it's her over Dion. Let's touch quickly on the bench guys. My bench ended up holding Hart, Bass, Bolter, Maggie Rags, and Murky Nug Swubbles. Hart was my go-to pinch hitter, Bass was second. Bolter and Rags would most often run or come in for late inning defense. Nubs never really did anything until I gave him an at-bat in the playoffs and he knocked one out that started a rally and sealed our victory and now he forever tops the playoffs team hitting stats list. Hilarious. Let's talk pitchers. For whatever reason, I sucked with Elmo Slayer in the regular season. Maybe I was taking his success for granted and not focusing on making pitches enough. When I started to intentionally place my pitches meticulously and be sure to concentrate on hitting numbers in the 90s, he morphed into the pitcher he promised to be. Bishop Fuller, on the other hand, was lights out all season and in the playoffs. There wasn't any disparity of production from Elmo to him. If anything, it was the other way around. Maybe A pitchers can be just as good as S ones. Maybe it's matchups or small sample size. Something I'll be tracking in my play going forward. Then there was a clear drop off. Air Lovestone is usable. She can aim. She will need run support to be sure. Boris Bigsworth. I hate it as a starter. He seemed to get rocked every time out. Finally in the playoffs, I decided to go to a three-man rotation and relegated Bigsworth to the bullpen, where he fared much better for me. In a series against the Buzzards, I sent him in to clean up for Fuller once. We had a substantial lead, and he was able to get locked in. Then, the next game, BAM! He's juiced, which became crucial when Elmo got nailed in the balls in the third inning and we needed a long relief badly. I think a three-man rotation is the way to go with this team. Durr Neverwalker was far and away the go-to guy in the pen. Anytime I absolutely needed outs, I called his number, and most often, he delivered. Splash Cashmore was the next best guy. He can't mix his pitches too much and has no junk, but his velo and accuracy are very good. He didn't fare as well as I thought he might be able to, though. Huck and Duck is garbage, but still not the worst in this pen. His pitching strategy is accurately described in his name. Simba Delano needs to just retire already. He can't aim at all, and his stuff is weak. Also, he only has two pitches, and the AI loves to predict everything against him due to this. He only went in with the game decided if I could help it at all. So, how good are the heaters? I definitely think power is easily the most important stat in the game still, and they don't have a ton of it. They hope to make it up with speed, D, and a couple of horses on the bump. I don't think this is a winning formula for this game. The new base running seems to have nerfed speed a bit, and while defense is more crucial, it's not going to greatly impact more than a couple plays a game. For a season, you really want more than three good pitchers on a team. I think that a staff of mostly good pitchers is better than having a few excellent pitchers and rubbish. This may be reversed in pennant race, but only if you have Slayer or Fuller start for you. Feeling lucky? I can't say for sure where the heaters rank exactly because it's only the second team I've played so far, but I don't think I'm reaching and concluding this is a below average team. That said, I did have fun playing as them. I even managed to reach a fairly high star point total that would have been good for first place on PC if somebody didn't already have a score slightly higher. If you want more team deep dive videos like this, touch the like button. So far, I haven't had a video top 5 likes. It's really not good for my self esteem. 10 likes equals I make another vid. I've already done a moose season, so if you want to see a moose video, mash like. If you'd rather see another team, mash like and write a comment telling me which. I will literally play a whole season just because you suggested spending hours of my life that I'll never get back, and I don't even know you. Really, this is just irresponsible of me, but I've already committed. I can't take it back now. While you're at it, subscribe for more SMB3 content. That is, if I reach 10 likes. Thanks!